Jules reveals the shocking truth about Lyme disease, but infections spread by ticks don't only affect us. They can be just as dangerous for our dogs. So now, best pour forward as Jules and his Labrador Teddy discover how to keep man and dog safe outdoors. Teddy and I love exploring the countryside. It allows him time to stretch his legs, have a good sniff around and generally do what dogs do. But in doing so, I am, of course, exposing him to the chance of being bitten by an infected tick. So what as pet owners can we do to keep our dogs safe? Come on, Teddy. To find out, I'm meeting Professor of Zoology at the University of Bristol, Richard Wall. Richard recently headed up the Big Tick Project, a study designed to map tick hotspots across the UK. And some of his findings have been pretty startling. Well, Richard, it's clear that ticks are an issue out here in the countryside, but I think many people will be surprised to learn that from your work, they're also a problem in our urban parks as well. They certainly can be. It depends very much on the type of park, but where we have a park that has trees and long grass, and particularly if it has large animal hosts like deer, we, we certainly will get ticks. You've gone to great lengths to study ticks in huge numbers. Using that, what is it? It's an extremely simple tool. It's just a white piece of cloth on a bamboo pole. And it's perfectly you know, sufficient to fool the ticks into thinking that there's a passing animal. As you drag it over the grass, the ticks grab hold. When we turn the cloth over, we can count the ticks. Well, should we see how many you can find, Richard? I'll give it a go. So tell us a bit more about the, um, the big tick project. We wanted to try and get a very large sample size of ticks. But we contacted lots and lots of veterinary surgeons and we got them to check dogs for us. We had about 10,000 dogs examined as part of the survey and we were able to detect the various pathogens that are circulating in ticks in the UK yeah. fairly accurately. Richard's research revealed that a third of the dogs studied were carrying ticks, putting them and their owners at risk of catching Lyme disease. Well, should we have a look and see if you've managed to trawl anything? But judging by our sheet-dragging experiment, Teddy and I aren't in too much danger here today. Ah, there. No, lots of leaf hoppers. Is that it? No. no, the other black oh, one, that. No. There. No. Gosh, to the untrained eye, I mean, they all look like ticks, don't they? And, and in the end, you start just seeing ticks everywhere. <laughs> ah, got one. So we've got an adult female tick. Gosh, there. Yeah, you can, and you can see those legs. Yeah. Those nippers. So those front legs that it's waving around in front of it, that's when it sits in the grass, it waits for an animal to come past, and that's what's going to grab that animal. They're beautiful, exquisite creatures. They really are. You, you know. think so? <laughs> <laughs> Teddy and I aren't so convinced. So are dogs more susceptible to Lyme disease than humans? No. It, in terms of the Lyme disease itself, they're probably slightly less susceptible than humans, but because they're running through the undergrowth and lying, as we've just seen, in, on, on, the, on the grass and in deer paths and things, they're just more likely to pick up ticks. Now... We give Teddy a pill once every three months, which gets rid of ticks. So I'm fairly confident about him today yep. being here. But for anybody who hasn't treated their dog in the same way, what should they be looking for? The first thing is, if you, when you take your dog for a walk, you should just check it for ticks when you get back. And particularly places like the ears, are yeah. quite, quite common biting sites, around, around the head, yeah. and, and then underneath the armpits. Yeah. And you can just basically try and feel for them. I mean, normally when they're dog. swollen, you can feel them, can't you? You can. It takes about 24 hours for the pathogens to go from the tick into the dog. So if we can get that tick off as soon as possible, we minimize the risk of disease in the dog. And if in any doubt, go and talk to your vet. But let's just say, for whatever reason, Teddy got a tick and he got Lyme disease. What would be the symptoms that we're looking for? Well, if you notice changes in behaviour, if the animal's looking more lethargic, if it's off its food, if it's not its normal, lively self, then take it to a vet straight away. Explain that it's been in a tick-infested area, yeah. that maybe it had a tick bite, and get the vet to check it out thoroughly. Certainly, lethargy and being off his food is something we definitely notice with Teddy. There's no doubt that catching Lyme disease is a worrying prospect, but there are ways you can minimise your risk of getting it. When you go out for a walk, wear long trousers and always tuck them into your socks. Opt for light colours, they'll show up ticks far better. Spray your skin and clothes liberally with insect repellent, and when you get home, check thoroughly for ticks. Well, sadly, there's no escaping the fact that ticks are a real issue. 
And if you are unlucky enough to be bitten by one that happens to be carrying Lyme disease, you should take immediate action. Go and see your GP. But on no account should you worry about coming out here and enjoying the great British countryside. As with everything else, when it comes to safety, a bit of care and common sense will go an awfully long way. Well, it did. Yeah, good boy. Come on. <laughs>